really honored to be here with you. Um, it's bittersweet for me. Um, so the overt racism and oppression that we see and saw in this beautiful place, I think is merely, um, it's not isolated, it's just obvious. It just forces us to confront the reality that is here. And so the title of my talk is A Tale of Two Cities. And it's inspired by a recent publication from the Kerwin Institute and the Office of Commercial and Economic Development here in Washtenaw County. Did anybody see that report? OK. I, didn't, I thought you might not have. And I want to I share what the report says. It's titled, Two Futures, uh, One Community. So on the one hand, our county is number one in Michigan for health factors. Say yay. yay. Mm -hmm. Except that if you turn left out of St. Joe's Hospital or right out of Michigan Medicine and you head to the 48197 or 198 zip codes, if you are black or brown, your health outcomes are 10 years left life, less life expectancy or 17 years, if you're Latinx in this county, you live 17 years less if you make a left out of St. Joe's instead of heading to Ann Arbor. Number one most educated city in America. Yay! Except if you're black or brown, the racial gap for kids of color in our county is a 40 point spread. Black boys, right here in Ann Arbor, perform under our children with special needs. And of course, you heard Chuck talk about the realities in Ipsy Community Schools. But I'm talking about right here in our backyard in Ann Arbor. We are number six for cities that are secretly great for tech grads. Except Ann Arbor is the eighth most economically segregated city in the country. We are number three in the hottest market for housing. <laughs> Woo! Except I think we all know that affordable housing is not something that's available to everyone. In fact, part of my narrative is that we moved here um, at the height of the crack epidemic, my mom was a single mom who was fleeing Detroit at the height of the crack epidemic. This is in the late 80s, early 90s. And when we came here, there was a promise, right? Um, Ann Arbor was going to be our refuge. I remember she took me down Getty's and here on Parkway. Look at the trees, baby. Look at the trees. It's so beautiful. And your education and your opportunity, your safety, those are all options we have here. And I remember thinking deep in the pit of my gut that something did not feel safe or inclusive or for me or about me here. In fact, the first time I heard the N-word was in the halls of Huron High School. <clears throat> I remember that we moved on to Green Road, you know, up on Plymouth, one of the better parts of town, right? And we moved into Greenbrier Apartments. Anybody know those apartments? Yeah, right on Green Road. And across the street were the Green Road, what? Projects. And then if you move a little bit further towards Glacier, you have some of the, high, the, the wealthiest housing market in our city, right? And so every day, I would load on to the yellow bus headed to Huron with the kids from Green Road Projects. And that's where some of the best and tightest bonds of my life were formed. Very rarely were there kids from the Glacier community on that bus, but there were a few. And we'd go to school, and we'd get off that bus right on Huron Parkway in front of Huron, and we would not see each other again until the end of the day. And in fact, we never saw, in the four years that I was in public schools in Detroit, I never took a foot in a friend's house in Glacier, on Glacier Way or in that community. Because our reality is, when we close our doors at 6 o'clock for dinner, they are often not open to people who look differently than us. And that was certainly my reality. 
The other thing that I confronted was my mom had broken the barrier in our family. She'd gone to college and gotten a graduate degree and had committed her life to education and worked here in Ann Arbor. But we could only afford that $600 a month apartment on Green Road. And still to this day, a whole generation later, I cannot afford to live in the community where I work, I give my time, I'm on two boards here, where I play, but I cannot afford an Ann Arbor address. And there was a time, I want to honor my, acknowledge my own privilege because I've had it. There was a time where I did, my mom married well, and the gentleman she married um, sold me his house in Ann Arbor inexpensively. And then the economy tanked, and I had a low-wage job at the time here in Ann Arbor on Main Street, a low-wage job, and I lost that home or chose to give it up because we were so underwater. And I've never returned to an Ann Arbor zip code since then. I want you to know that I'm the chief operating officer of the new center here in Ann Arbor. I have a college degree. I've worked hard in my life, I've done well for myself, and I can't be here. And so I'm standing before you today because we have to not just be, as this report was, validated or shaking our heads, but it infuriated me. And it confirmed what I'd always known, and it's what Chuck talked about, the being, what it feels to be invisible in this town. That we're in this quasi like utopia, right? Everything's great about Ann Arbor. Let me tell you another couple stats about our great, great city. Number five green cities for families and number one city for millennials. Woo! It's the most expensive rental market in Michigan, and we are in the bottom 8% for social mobility. What that means is that my son, who's running around here trying to get autographs, what that means is that he is, as a result of the inability to move, to have that social mobility, he is 67% more likely to fall back into poverty. The poverty that not me, not my mother, but her mother experienced. That's why I'm infuriated. Because we move and exist in this town and with one another, and don't get me wrong, there are lots of wonderful things, but I'm not here for that story. I'm here for the reality that there are children here today who are our future, and the health of any community is determined by their quality of life. And right now, our reality is that your zip code in this county determines your quality of life. And so for those of us who are uncomfortable crossing 23, your choice not to cross Carpenter is a choice to fail our children. It's a choice. You are signing up and pledging that you are not committed to the future health of this community. If you are unwilling to be infuriated by what we all are complicit in, these numbers we are each complicit in, and so what is your ask, Yodi? What do you want? Well, I'd like this for starters. I would like not to have to know. When I tell you I feel invisible, it's because when somebody says affordable, affordable housing, you know what image comes to my mind? It's people who look like me. I know, because I serve on the board of a homeless shelter, that 87% of our homeless families are black like me. Right? So I, I feel like we've got to have a bargain. We've got to have an agreement. And my ask is that the work of equity and inclusion is about seeking and sitting in the truth of our two cities, of our county, that you sit with it, that you grapple with it, that you are uncomfortable, we are all uncomfortable with it, and that we make a choice in dollar and in deed to transform the outcomes of our county for our children in service to their future. Thank you for your time. When I